Hello everyone and welcome to Cinderful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video is a Black Library review. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at one of the many publications brought out by Black Library and giving you our thoughts on the book audio drama whatever it happens to be now i will say that we will try to keep this review to as spoiler free as possible though there will obviously be points where we talk about things happening in the book we will try to keep away from saying any of the major plot points so you can go and read this book for yourself we'll just give you our thoughts on whether or not we think it is something you may be interested in so we'll use this video to instruct you on maybe is this sort of going to be a book that you would like to see with that all said and out the way let's get cracking on let's talk a little bit about the book that we have reviewed this time Today's video, we're going to be reviewing Kurt City by C.L. Werner, and if you picked up the Audible version, uh, narrated by Richard Reed. Uh, I decided it would be a good time to finally listen to this. When we got the announcement back of Kurt City uh, coming back, obviously it's going to be on a major water basis to begin with. Looks like that's about to come out in September if you're interested in the board game. Um, I thought, you know, well, why not? It's a good time to give this book finally a listen. I generally listen to things uh, in audio format while I'm painting and stuff like that. I know that's a really popular way, but you can get it in both ebook and still in soft cover, I believe, uh, from Black Library. But yeah, I thought it'd be a great time to sort of look into it now that we're sort of getting some more Cursed City content because it maybe gives us some ideas of what's to come for Cursed City. But with that said, let's get talking about the book in detail. And so, setting the scene, the story takes us into the mortal hell that is Ulfen Khan, the Cursed City, formerly known as Mournhold, a city of Sigma, uh, in a previous time. It's a very dark and dangerous place, ruled over by the tyrannical vampire known as Radikar the Wolf. Uh, Radikar is an absolute tyrant of the city. He, at one point, did save the city from the threat of a Cornet Chaos cult, uh, sailing in with his Kasai, the ogres that were his fighting warriors. Um, but his salvation that he gave the city was at a cost. He slaughtered the nobility and the hierarchy of the city, taking it over in pretty much a single night of bloodshed, terror, and murder, and all other sorts of horrible things. Um, now, however, he holds dominion over the city of Ulfen Khan, formerly Mournhold, and has a very diabolical plan in store for both the city and its inhabitants. Um, this is really the scene. We're going to set the scene for the Cursed City board game. This is set before the board game. And so, the book's purpose. As mentioned, it sets the scene for Cursed City, the board game. Um, and obviously, that board game is Warhammer Quest Cursed City. And that sort of takes us through the story of the actual overthrowing of Radica. This book sets us up and introduces us, really, to the setting that we're going to experience in the board game. It doesn't tell us the story of the overthrow, because obviously that is part of the board game that you will get to play. So... This is great for maybe reading this before you actually start playing Curse City. It introduces you to a few of the characters we're going to get to play as in Curse City, uh, whether directly having them as a main character or a secondary character within the novel itself, or by simply name dropping them along the way. It does give us a true insight and a first hand look at Ranikar the Wolf's terrible tyranny uh, and how the populace of the city live in constant fear of the things that come out in the night that he has brought to the city, whether that be the Orphan Watch, the Skeleton Warriors, or indeed uh, even showing us how people are willing to throw away their allegiance to the God King when a new power confronts them directly. Uh, so things like the Living Mortal Guard uh, that have sort of worked for Radikar and gained his sort of protection uh, and favour by being his enforcers of the humans, you know, turncoats of their own kind, really. It does a great job at sort of just really introducing us to the setting, so we've got a lot of information to go in when we get to the Cursed City board game. And so, the main characters of the story. Now, if you've played Cursed City the board game already, you're probably only going to recognise one of these characters as uh, a character you actually play in with the board game. Now, if you did pick this book up, originally there was a cool card, and you can probably go find it online for one of the others, but the main character, I guess, of the story is Gustav Voss. Now, this is a vampire hunter of the Order of Azir. Um, now, 
he actually is not the same vampire hunter that you play, obviously, in Curse City. That is Eos and Darok. Uh, so... The story focuses around Gustav Voss. He's a vampire hunter from Castinia. He's come in and he's essentially trying to track down uh, Yoss and Darek. That is his sort of purpose in the book. Um, and along the way, he meets the other two main characters. Though Gustav definitely is number one in the book. Uh, first of all, he meets Amelda Braskov. Uh, Amelda is the character that, obviously, if you've seen the game, uh, she's the female Imperial soldier. She's a noble, the only last remaining Braskov in Ulfenkarn. All of her family were either slaughtered or turned uh, to vampires by Ranikar the Wolf. Uh, and she's on this urge for conquest and to sort of... Uh, reclaim her city she is solely focused on seeing Radikar destroyed Morval is our most interesting I think his purpose is never really truly shown inside he's a really sort of um, I guess reclusive character he doesn't really share a lot of information with us throughout the entirety of the book um, though he is an integral part of the party and sort of I guess being a death mage a ally of convenience rather than an ally that the other two really want but he definitely plays his part in the entirety of the story it's these three characters that the story really revolves around um, starting off with Gustav introducing Imelda and then finally Morval uh, as we get all three of these characters introduced they are the ones that sort of lead the story along the way in the different parts of the book and so what changes really about these main characters in the book now this is probably where the most spoilers are going to be so if you want maybe skip ahead a little uh and wait for the next slide but so you've been warned Emelda is perhaps the character that really truly changes in the book Gustav and Morval don't really change all that much as characters um while Gustav is definitely a main character it is Emelda that sort of has the character progression through the story rather than Gustav he's pretty set in his ways and he is sort of the main character um that just sort of has that one sort of focus but it's this secondary character that Emelda is that really changes based on the other two characters around her uh, she dramatically changes her thoughts and attitudes and her plans on how she's going to end up completing her goal of destroying Radikar the Wolf. She obviously sort of, at the start, is sort of all guns blazing. Uh, she's just going to go in and fight Radikar one-on-one, -on -one, which obviously is not a smart idea. She will get chopped to pieces by the gigantic vampire that is Radikar the Wolf. And so it is through working with these maybe two more um, measured and calculating characters that she really learns okay i need to think about this i need a plan i need to have tactics and also learns of herself as the ability to be a figurehead for the people she's the last remaining of the nobility of mournhold and people will rally behind that as an idea um and so she realizes her place maybe is to rally and to be that person of the people rather than just throw her life away trying to confront and fight radica one on one and so, what does this book do? Well, well, first of all, it really does a great job of showing us the terror of living in a city ruled by a vampire court. Um, it shows us how terrifying it really is in there. Uh, not all the realms, as we get to see, are so full of hope and prosper, and not all of them are taking the fight to the enemies of the God King, much as we've read, you know, more Realm of Beast stuff like Dominion and stuff like that recently, where we sort of see, uh, you know, them striking out and making these campaigns and trying to conquer the heartlands of Gur. Rather, Curse City is really all about trying to survive in what is essentially enemy territory. The Realm of Death is a harsh and nasty place, and this really gives us a good look at it. The book really does also set us up well for the board game. I mean, that is its core purpose. It gives us a great look at the setting we're going to enter inside the Curse City board game, uh, and also gives us a real reason to want to take down Radica. We really get to see how the populace feel, how our characters feel, um, just get that look at them and really at the end of the book i really want to play her city and go and defeat radica which i guess is exactly what this book is really supposed to do and so, who would really like this book? Well, first of all, obviously, if you're getting into Curse City, this would be a great book to read before you go play Curse City, giving you a really good idea of the setting of that particular game. But certainly, if you're into a more gritty, dark, and less high fantasy style story, this is probably for you. I mean, there is definitely some of the uh, things in this uh, that really are, you know, what make Age of Sigma Age of Sigma. But this book could easily fit into the Warhammer fantasy world of old. Um, 
I really do think that, like, there's definitely sort of the story, you know, this could fit, like, right into a story of, like, somewhere in Sylvania. So, if you're a fan of the Warhammer Fantasy novels and maybe not, perhaps, a fan of some of the more over-the-top Age of Sigma stuff, this is definitely a novel that you could really enjoy, I think. And so, I guess, in summary, this is a great, dark, and gritty story that can do a good job of introducing you to the setting of Ulvenkan and getting you invested and ready for the Cursed City board game. Which, as we've said plenty of times, that is the point of this book. It can be slow in some parts. There are definitely parts where I thought it was treading water for maybe a little bit, but the last, probably, third to last quarter of the book is really stuff full of action and events and really quite enjoyable. And there definitely were some unexpected a twist and some things that I didn't see coming at the end of the book though uh, there were some that maybe were a little bit predictable in some places but it certainly was a great story to get me excited to play Cursed City if you read this book as well let us know what you thought of it down in the comments below well, that's the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, let us know down in the comments below what you enjoyed about it. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our little fine community here at Sinful Gaming, you can do so by joining our Discord server, which is linked down in the video's description. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the channel financially, you can do so by joining either our Patreon or YouTube members. Our YouTube members will get access to some cool little emojis you can use during live streams and also to comment on some of our posts and on our videos with, and you'll get your name with a special little icon on it as well on YouTube. Our Patreons and YouTube members will also get a name up in a special colour in our Discord server as well. And finally, you'll get a shout out from us as well on Patreon or YouTube members at the end of every video that you have helped support. Thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, James Soren, Greenskins Gaming, AJC, Kenny Lyle, Outer and Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Angu, Anthony B, Anton Nielsen, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, and James Cater. And a special thanks to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Kenton Young, Chris Wallace, Ronya, Vinny, Locklorick, The Johnny 84, David Ellsworth, Revenar, Wolfric Nick, Broken Shelf, Adriana Edwards, and Sean Scott. And a special thanks to, first of all, Lady Witchfox Art, who does all the amazing artwork in see pictured here for the channel, and to X Morphic, who does all the amazing background work for the channel. And that's it from us today. Please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment down on the video below. Stay safe, everyone. Stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the great. Ciao for now.